Welcome back to Anchor TV Weekly. I'm Raymond Bakari. Coming up, student community government is looking at changing the composition of its seats. Then, how students can prevent their vehicles from being broken into in the midst of rising vehicle break-ins throughout the country. And as always, a look at this past weekend's Rhode Island College sports results. Our first story this afternoon, the flu season is here, and members of the Rick community ages 18 and older can get their flu vaccine this week on campus. The clinic will be at the Student Union Ballroom Wednesday from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Online registration is required for those interested in getting their vaccine. On your screen is a link to where people can register. The login ID to schedule an appointment is RIC, all lowercase. Depending on how many appointments are scheduled, there may be walk-ins available, and those who have insurance are asked to bring their cards with them. In other news, business and accounting majors at RIC have a chance to find employment and internship opportunities this week. Wednesday, from 12 to 2 p.m., is a RIC Accounting and Business Job and Internship Fair. The fair itself will be taking place at Alger Hall, room 110. Both students and employers who want to attend can register at this event via, to register to be at this event via handshake. Additional questions can be directed to Donna Dorsey via email at ddorsey at rick.edu. Looking at one of our top stories this week, students at Rick may soon have a variety in, in their representation by SEG. A topic that was heavily discussed at the most recent parliament meeting was changing from all at-large representatives to seats representing specific constituencies of students. Anchor TV caught up with SEG President Matthew Jakes and Speaker Gianna Delmonico to learn more about this proposal. Having a certain number of like uh, reps for each uh, for each school here at Round College, you have a certain amount for like graduate students to represent them. Greek life orgs, you have them for re for residents at large and commuters at large. By doing it this way, instead of having it all either by constituency or all by at large, you have a little bit of both. So you have people representing different constituencies, but at the same time, you allow people to actually join Parliament, make it, uh, and make a difference. Like uh, the sign up, join Parliament, make a difference. Delmonico added that the idea is a hybrid of both how the current signature requirements are to become an at-large rep and how the major specific seats looked pre-COVID. Prior to um, the freeze, I guess, of those specific rules, we required that students would get signatures to join student community government specifically from the school or major that they were a part of. Um, and this kind of had the potential to result in some students requiring to get less signatures than other students. Um, and this was frozen in order to have a larger turnout at our meetings and uh, higher turnover, and so we suspended those to get just 50 regular signatures from any students, and so that way all of our, the students of Parliament would be at-large representatives representing the school as a whole. Uh, as an executive board, we decided that um, both of those instances are kind of on two ends of the extremes, and we decided to come across a compromise. A current draft of the proposal would have two seats each for each school at RIC, one fraternity and sorority seat, one performance-based admission seat, five at-large resident and five at-large commuter student seats, four total class seats represented by each class president, five seats that have one rep from each stipend receiving student organization, and two graduate student seats. How the graduate student seats will be funded is to be determined, as they currently don't pay student activity fees and can't join SEG. If this proposal passes, it will begin this spring and those constituencies start being represented in the following academic year. Jakes expects the change to pass Parliament this semester. Shifting to art-related news on campus, Rick's first theater show is this week. The play is Machinal by Sophie Treadwell. Machinal is an emotional drama based on the true story of Ruth Snyder. It follows Helen, a woman living in the 1920s, and her desire for freedom from the repetition of day-to-day -day societal pressures. Members of the Rick community can watch this play from Wednesday, October 4th through Sunday, October 8th. From Wednesday through Saturday, there will be showcases at 7.30 p.m., as well as a 1 p.m. showcase on both Saturday and Sunday. Tickets can be purchased in person at Sappensley Hall, online by visiting the website seen on the screen, or via phone by calling 401-456-8144. Early last week, Rick's campus police sent an advisory to the Rick community via email about vehicle break-ins and how to prevent them. Their email comes after an uptick in auto thefts and vehicle break-ins throughout the country and similar incidents that happened right on campus. To learn more about how campus police are responding to these, responding to these crimes and what students can do to prevent this from happening to them, I spoke with both campus police chief James Mendonca and a student whose vehicle was recently broken into on campus. 
Vehicle break-ins and auto thefts have been on the rise both throughout the country and the Rhode Island College campus. Rick's chief of campus police, James Mendonca, says this issue is on their radar. We're aware of what's happening in other parts of the state and the country, and you know we tried to be a little bit more preventative here on campus. You know, with the population is small, but it is a cut through, so people do make their way through. So we're going to be more diligent, you know, in our uh, you know preventive approach. You know, being more uh, responsive to to, uh, to these incidents, be more prepared for it, and give the information out so our pros are, uh, increase. We're going to be keeping more of an eye on the parking lots, especially you know the commuter lots and the ones the parking areas where students will park their cars overnight. So far, there have been three vehicle break-ins this semester. Two occurred this past week. For two of the three, there was surveillance footage, which Mendonca says led to three individuals being stopped and ID'd the following day. We end up stopping three individuals that fit that description the very following day. Got their IDs, their information, and we're passing that information on to province as well. The third incident happened in early September to Rick student Olivia Tidd. Tidd's passenger windshield was broken and all four of the car's tires were stolen. I walked out there and I didn't think it was my car for a second. I really thought, I, I like had to stare at my car for a minute. I had a water bottle in my um, cup holder, like a bright pink water bottle, and I was like, obviously I know it's my car, but I was just in disbelief and very scared. I didn't know if anyone was nearby, if it just happened. There was no surveillance footage for this specific break-in. Tid said that their car was parked in an area where the cameras were down because of construction that was going on. They tried to look at cameras, and if you know that like the back lot of that parking lot is labeled as security watch, but apparently the cameras were down because they were doing construction. I wasn't aware of that. Um, so the only cameras they had was facing the other way. Um, so they were able to see other things, but nothing incriminating that could be related to my car. So my guess is they came up past Penfield and didn't even see the camera. Since these incidents, campus police has emailed students telling them ways they can prevent their vehicles from being broken into. Don't leave any valuables. Make sure the cars are locked. Make sure you park in a, you know, a well-lit area. If you see anyone in the area suspicious of, go with your instincts, move the vehicle somewhere else, contact campus police and we'll respond. Also too, I knew there was one incident where this, the tires were stolen. They had wheel locks on the vehicle. Most of the time when they, uh, the dealer will put the wheel lock key right into the glove box. That's where they normally put it. We, we would suggest that that be moved from the glove box so the thieves know they're there as well. That's the first place they're going to look. So hide it someplace else in the vehicle other than, than the glove box. In terms of the investigations, Mendonca says campus police are assisting the Providence Police Department in any way they can. From Rhode Island College, Raymond Bakari, Anchor TV. And again, students are urged to stay alert and if they see or hear anything that's suspicious and unusual, to call either 911 or campus police at 401 456 8888. Now it's time for an update on the results of this past weekend's Rick Sports results. Sports manager Isaac Bean is in studio to, rec to recap those games. Isaac? Thank you, Raymond. Rhode Island College's men's soccer team got back into the win column on Wednesday versus Eastern Connecticut State 1-0. Before that win, the team was on a little bit of a rough streak. Unfortunately, they blew a 3-1 lead against UMass Boston on Saturday. The team gave up two goals late to make the final score tied three goals apiece. A tie is not as bad as a loss, but a win would have been nice. Jonathan Oliveira had the hat trick in this game, giving him a ridiculous 11 goals on the season. Oliveira is becoming what looks to be an all-American soccer player. The women's tennis team has been racking up wins this season. They're now on a five-game win streak. The Ingramen have been dominating the competition. This past week alone, they shut out Plymouth State 9-0 and smoked Curry College 7-2. They were supposed to play Salem State on Saturday, but the game was postponed. The Anchor women look to improve their win streak to six with a game against Southern Maine today at 3 p.m. The women's soccer team lost their second game this season Saturday against UMass Boston with a score of 2-1. The Anchor women were riding a six-game win streak. The girls will look back to get back into the win column with a game against Wentworth on Wednesday at 6 p.m. The men's golf team plays second in the Emanuel Invitational this Thursday. Hopefully, the results will be similar for the Little East Championship coming up this Thursday and Friday in Portland, Maine. In studio, Isaac Bean, Anchor TV, back to you, Raymond. Thank you, Isaac. Next Wednesday at 1 p.m. will be a ceremonial signing for the Hope Scholarship at Rick. The scholarship provides the last two years tuition-free for in-state students, then enroll at Rick as a freshman and meet other various requirements. The signing will see Governor Dan McKee and other state leaders join interim Rick President Dr. Jack Warner at the front of the Murray Center. A student who is currently a recipient of the scholarship will also talk about how it has impacted them. 
everyone in the RIC community is welcome to attend and pre-registration is not required. That's all we have for this week on Anchor TV Weekly. To see future episodes and content by Anchor TV, please click the subscribe button down below. To get even more updates on what's happening at RIC, visit anchorweb.org. And just a quick programming note, Anchor TV Weekly will not be airing next week on Monday, October 9th. That day is a holiday, Indigenous Peoples Day, and RIC will be closed. Anchor TV Weekly will return in two weeks, which will be on Monday, October 16th. From Providence, Rhode Island, I'm Raymond Bakari, and I'll see you in two weeks.